Hi, my name is John Jorgensen and I did my project on Bright House Financial. And I'd like to start off by giving a brief history of Bright House Financial. And that is that although it has a short of track record on its own, it's actually been part of other insurance giants since the early the mid-1930s. And this started off in, in under the umbrella of the Traveler's Life Insurance Company in 1934. And it had a long run with them. But in 2005, the unit that Bright House Financial was in was sold to insur another insurance giant, MetLife. And in 2000, late 2015 and early 2016, MetLife spun off Bright House Financial into its own company. And after it began its own thing, in July 2017, it began trading on the NASDAQ under the symbol BHF. And in August of 2017, they finished their separation and chose to incorporate in Charlotte, just like MetLife. And in August 2018, something they've done recently is they launched the Bright House Foundation, which is a nonprofit that gives money to, that helps nonprofits to help their community. And Bright House Financial has approximately 1,260 employees across the headquarters in Charlotte, the office in Morristown, New Jersey, New York City, Boston, and Tampa, Florida. And it didn't give me any specific information as to what branch had how many employees. So I just assumed that the Morristown, Tampa, New York City, and Boston offices all had approximately 225 employees each just because they were pretty much identical in all the services they offered. While the headquarters in Charlotte would have approximately 360 employees just due to the extra responsibilities that need to happen in the central office in the headquarters. All right, and the CEO of Bright House Financial is a guy named Eric Steigerwalt, and he's been with Bright House Financial since August of 2016 when they were finishing up the transfer from MetLife. And he earned a bachelor's in economics degree from Drew University in Iowa. And prior to leaving Bright House Financial, he had been with MetLife's U.S. sales division since 2012 until 2016 when he took over Bright House Financial. And before that, he worked at MetLife since 1998. And here's a picture of Eric Steigerwald. Okay. And Bright House Financial chose to incorporate as a result of spinning off from MetLife, as I've said earlier, and they incorporated in Charlotte. And the main reason for incorporating was that even though they split from a corporation, so it may be feasible to be a partnership, the size of Bright House Financial, the fact that it had over a thousand employees, and the fact that it was led by a CEO and had a board of directors, it essentially had no choice but to become a corporation. And here's the five-year sales of Bright House Financial. As you can see, in 2014 and 2015, the first year's listed, just in case this font's getting in the way. The sales were high between $8.72 and $9 billion. And since 2015, there's been a downward trend in sales from $9 billion down to $8 billion at the end of 2018. And this graphically represents the net income and net profit, so revenues and then earnings. So as you can see, in 2015, revenues were very high, right up against $9 billion, and earnings were a little over a $1 billion. But in 2016 and 2017, revenues went down significantly, and the company actually lost money. And then they began to recover in 2018, which makes me more optimistic about the company's financials because their revenues almost matched 2015 even though they made a little less in profits. And here is the five-year stock chart of Bright House Financial and you may notice that it's not actually five years but this is only because when it began trading in July of 2017 that wasn't five years ago so it was impossible to get five years, but this was the whole history of the company. And Bright House Financial is represented under the NASDAQ and the, tip, the ticker BHF. 
and the stock went public on July 21st of 2017. And shares of the company have exchanged hands between private firms, executives, or just regular everyday investors since then. The independent auditor for Bright House Financial is Deloitte and Touche Limited Liability Partnership. And a fun fact about them is that they have been assessing Bright House Financial's financials ever since the company started in late 2015. Okay. And here's a representation of the target markets of Bright House Financial. I took this off of their website. And as you can see, they try to allocate 8% of U.S. population is their target market in the usually lower income and has less to invest. And then 23% of Americans is also a block that they're targeting. And that's mainly middle class people that may have kids that are older and grown up or are getting ready to go to college. And they typically have some investable assets. And then 15% of the population they target is seniors. And this is mainly because they're looking for security in all of their products. And they have more investable assets than anybody because they've had longer to accumulate. And one thing I'd like to point out is that this only adds up to 45% of the U.S. population. And I think it may be a little dumb to write off 55% of the United States population as part of their target. But if that's what they want to do. Okay. And the market segments they most target, like I previously stated, were people with few investable assets, middle-class households with either teenage or college-age students, or older people nearing retirement. And one product line that I'm going to really focus on that Bright House Financial does is the sale of Shield annuities. And Shield annuity is a financial product that cushions volatility by reducing the upside but at the same time, if the market were to go down, you would not lose nearly as much money as if you didn't have one. And although Bright House Financial does offer a lot of products, the Shield annuities are actually right now the best performing thing that they offer with sales up 72%. Okay. And there are endless combinations of Shield annuities, obviously, because you could buy different types of stocks in each one. But the main ones they offer are the portfolio type, which are either three to six years shield annuities. And some of the promotional strategies that Bright House has is, you know, of course they do basic advertisement like on TV or the internet, but something they really rely heavily on is telling local financial advisors about their products that they offer and just getting their foot in the door there because local people are generally more trusted in advertisements. So if they can get in with the local people, then the local people that are trusted by the people will get into Bright House Financial that way. Okay. And Bright House Financial enjoys a medium market share. It's, if you look at a list of all of the insurance companies that they compete against, they're pretty much right in the middle. You have Prudential and other comp other larger, more well-known companies like State Farm at the top, and then they're kind of in the middle, and then you have other companies like the Hartford that are closer to the bottom. But And it's actually 25% of its previously incorporated MetLife and then Prudential. Okay. And some of the distribution channels and supply partners that Bright House has is that they utilize local firms that are already established and well-regarded in the community. And they actually have a team of decentralized advisors, so people that don't actually work in the company but work outside. And they market their products to the local advisors. And all products, according to their website, so they don't actually deal directly with consumers, but they only go through financial advisors, which I think is actually pretty smart. Okay, and predicted performance in the future, as I've already stated in the sales data from 2018, it appears that the company is increasing its sales and profit margins. So I think the predicted performance is very strong. And the earnings per share now is 
the consensus is around $8.93 per share. And the consensus forecast for 2020 is approximately $10.17 per share. So that's a pretty good increase there. And this is mainly because of the sale of shield annuities, which again are Bright House's best, best product that they sell. Okay. And here are my references and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.